interested in possibly adopting an OER for the communications class that's offered out of the English department. And I did want to point out to you that there is an interpersonal communication open textbook that's here. If we click on that link, it brings this up. This was written by faculty at New Paltz and at Oswego. Um, I think that's kind of nice to know because we have so many students who go from Hudson Valley and they transfer to other SUNYs to know it's for a SUNY audience. Um, you note that there's, uh, here's the Creative Commons license for this particular work here. There's a table of contents so you could get a sense of what's in this particular book. Now, my understanding, and maybe Mike could correct me um, now or later on, or you could follow up with him, is I think it's more difficult to import the Milne Open textbooks into Blackboard. They're really kind of designed as eBooks and they don't have that portability. So that's one downside of them. Is that, I see Mike shaking his head. That's yes, correct, that information. Okay, so that's something to keep in mind, but still it might be a way for you to get started. Um, as a little bit of an aside, one thing I wanted to share with you, if I go back to their main page, um, kind of near and dear to my heart, um, I and a number of other librarians started using an open uh, textbook for English 115, Library Skills and Research. And we started using that around 2015. And we used one of these, um, here it is, the Information Literacies um, User uh, Users Guide. This is getting a little dated, but right now we're um, faculty who are teaching that course continue to use this. And I did want to point out to you that this particular version is available as a PDF and ebook download through EPUB. And also it's available to review online. Um, my guess is there are some ways you might be able to um, get that into an editable form, but these are a little more difficult, okay? But there's a number of them in there and I encourage you to um, take a look at the main index to see the content that's there. Again, an easy swap, open textbook for your traditional textbook is a way, simple way to move forward, take a, take a step into the OER pool. Brenda, you're muted. Got it. Thank you. <laughs> I'm back. Um, okay, so we took a look at OpenStax and Milm. So now we'll have our drum roll. Okay, here's the SUNY uh, Ready to Adopt courses. They're listed here under the banner of SUNY OER Services. And these are the Lumen. Uh, the Lumen, this is the Lumen platform. There's about 120 or so, I think, courses that are listed on here. So what you could do, you could take a look by subject area. Um, I'm just checking my notes to see. Okay, so we could, um, here's all the courses. Here's the one, Abnormal Psychology. This is the one for which Sam Miller is a, um, she is a co-author of this. So there we go. There's uh, Sam Miller, yay, Hudson Valley. Woohoo, faculty excellence, okay, and expertise shown here. Um, you can view the course content um, through that particular link and take a look and see what's included on this. And the really wonderful thing about all these is they can be imported uh, with a through a course cartridge. I don't think it's called a cartridge, but it's similar to a cartridge um, into Blackboard. All these get ported in um, to your course uh, with DL's help. And then you can work away at this um, well, and that's what Sam Miller has done and customize, reorder, add, delete, and so on. Um, I realize abnormal psych isn't probably the best example to show you because that's Sam's course and um, she's already uh, taking care of this. Let's go back to the main page. Um, again, if you're following along, then feel free to click away and go in and see what else is in there. The one that I wanted to show you is under technology. 
and um, it is the course on computer applications. Um, from the registration list, there was one of you that was going to be attending today that teaches a course, a CMPT course that focuses on Microsoft Office applications. And you might be very pleased to see that there is a Lumen ready to adopt course right here um, that you might want to think about using or explore it. Um, this might be a way for you to jump right into the OER um, to OER mode uh, without, without too much additional searching. As you can see, there's an intro to computers. You can see this one's really very extensive. Um, Microsoft Excel, they, they all go from basic, intermediate to advanced and all the, the major office applications, okay? So that's one example of what's in Lumen in addition to abnormal psychology. Um, as Mike said um, and, uh, in his remarks, some of the strengths of the SUNY, SUNY Ready to Adopt Catalog, and there's many strengths, but those include that these are very robust courses, okay? So there's a tremendous amount of development that's been done on these. Um, they're fully integratable into Blackboard for customization and access. Um, some of the interactive elements in particular, let me go back one, um, let me go back a screen and show you where um, on the main page, if we look at the tiles for the courses, bear with me a second here. A little slow to load here. Um, here we go. On the main page, it shows you the, the Lumen platform or the OLI platform that's available. And as we heard from our keynote speaker, Professor um, T from Monroe, she was describing the really wonderful interactive elements, especially the communications between faculty and students that are available on the Waymaker platform. So if that was something that intrigued you, um, be on the lookout for courses that are available through Waymaker in order to take advantage of some of that functionality. And again, that is free. Um, let's see, free because of the partnership between SUNY and Lumen right now. Um, also just wanted to highlight again and emphasize that the SUNY ready to adopt courses that you're seeing here on this page have all been vetted for accessibility. So that's not something you would need to be concerned about. They've passed the test um, and um, they're set for that. Um, the other uh, you know, plug I'll put in, the, the another advantage of the SUNY Ready to Adapt courses is they're, for, uh, they're focused on undergraduate students, um, particularly for their first two years. Um, so there's uh, a lot of content that might be applicable to courses taught here at Hudson Valley. Okay, let me go on to another platform. Oh, I'm slow here. Uh, here we go. All right. So shifting now to, um, to another platform, let's take a look at the Open Textbook Library the Open Textbook Library is a larger collection. As you can see, this one has close to 900 open textbooks available. Um, so we've gone from looking at collections that have 60 or 100 to kind of the next magnitude. This one we're getting, uh, you know, about a, a 900. So the advantage of this, it's a larger collection. So different disciplines are included in this that weren't in the other smaller collections. And those include, um, first let's take a look at the subject listing that's on here. And you can see some subjects that we hadn't seen in the other collections, including law, um, including engineering, and um, medicine was another one. Um, one of our registrants was from Dental Hygiene. I'm not sure if she's here. I'm sorry, I didn't recognize all the names. Um, but I did want to point out that they have uh, an open textbook for dental hygiene. And one of the things that caught my eye 
was it's specifically for college students and dental hygienist programs. So certainly that's what we have at Hudson Valley. Again, I leave it to you faculty experts to determine if this is a book that would meet your needs and if the content is up to date. Here's how we just click into this one. I can't testify about whether this can be imported into Blackboard. Um, that would be something you'd have to start exploring. It's available on a variety of platforms. Um, and this is what we always look for is the Creative Commons attribute so that you can do some, let's see, this means that you can revise it. Yeah, okay. So the revisions are available with this particular license. All right, so just wanted to highlight um, the um, dental hygiene text. Those are hard to find in the open. The other um, search that I did is I thought that one of you might be teaching a nutrition course and I found in the open textbook library, it was pretty rich with open textbooks on this particular topic. The very first one there um, includes, uh, it's, a, it's very recent, it's a 2020 edition, and it's intended for a 100 level course. So this might have some applicability. One thing about open textbook library is it includes reviews. Okay, so if you ever wanted to go in, you wanted to add a review, I'm not sure how much stock I would put on reviews, but you could take a quick peek and see what colleagues are looking at. Um, I didn't really want to read all the reviews, but here, um, again, if you're the nutrition faculty member, you'd have a chance to go in and see what's in the contents. And again, here are the different formats available. And like I said, what I'm looking for in my role is, is this open? And it is, here's the Creative Commons license that has been applied by the authors of this textbook. Okay, so um, take a look at Open Textbook Library and you may find something there that works for you. Oh, and it was um, Jason, I think. I don't know, remind me, Jason, was it animation that you were interested in? Yes, thumbs up, animation. Okay, so not sure. I, I actually did a search for computer graphics before, um, and there is some stuff on computer graphics. And it doesn't, well, I'm not seeing anything right here on animation, so this might not be all that helpful. Okay, this is kind of typical. You get some strikeouts, and sometimes you get some hits when you're looking, but all you can do is try to, try to search. Okay, so that's a little bit more about open textbook library. All right, and I'm going to continue on. And the next ones that I wanted to show you are OER Commons and Merlot. But maybe I'll stop for a second before I get into those. Any immediate questions that you have that you wanted to, to ask before I keep rattling along? Okay, so I'm gonna continue. All right, so the next two platforms I wanna show you are different from the last three where, we've, where they only are providing um, open textbooks. The next two, o OER Commons and Merlot are what I would call OER repositories and they include uh, a lot of open material. Somebody was asking before about quizzes, um, I can't remember if somebody asked about, you know, homework, homework um, or other supplements. You could go to OER Commons and Merlot to find what I call more granular open materials. So maybe you've already found a textbook, but it's missing some content that you'd like to try to find in some other source. Maybe you just want a chapter on something. So you go to one of these repositories where they may have um, a larger collection of these smaller pieces. And let me show you what I mean. I'm going now to OER Commons. Okay, just checking my notes, bear with me here. And um, 
this time, what we're going, uh, I wanted to just point out that one of the things that's different about OER Commons is it includes more global contributors. Somebody was asking before about ESL learners. Um, this might be a place where you might find um, ESL materials, for example, um, or, just lang or just content in languages other than English um, in here. Let's scroll down a little bit. It's the main search up here. Um, uh, what struck me about OER Commons is they also have some other collections in here that are curated. Um, although I'm not sure how much applicability these have to Hudson Valley, I leave that to you to describe, but they've sort of collected a bunch of, um, not a bunch, many different materials. For example, maybe teach engineering would be something you'd want to look at and those are all open materials, just about engineering. Um, as you can see, these come from other statewide initiatives like Colorado and Oregon State, okay? And um, that would be something to dive into here if that's your discipline. Um, so take a look at those collections and let me just go back another page to the main search. And uh, here was one where I thought one of you was um, from criminal justice. And I did a search on criminal justice to see what we could find. I think that um, Casey had mentioned in her panel remarks that there's limited materials um, she found at least a couple of years ago in this particular subject area. So I was curious to see what we could find in here. Um, there are criminal law materials in here. Also notice in these uh, repositories, they have additional what librarians call, um, well, filtered searching, okay? So let's say you're only interested in um, textbooks. You can limit your search to only textbooks related to the word criminal, and there's 19 of them including if um, one of you out there might be excited to see this, there is a textbook that comes from BC campus. BC is British Columbia. Um, o OER is very um, popular in Canadian universities. Um, there is a textbook on criminal investigation. Let's say textbooks is not what you're interested in, and I'll take out that filter. And instead, what you might be interested in is lesson plans or primary sources. So you can see the filtering in some of these larger repositories is much more sophisticated and complicated, but it's also imperfect, but you can give it a try so you're not sifting through hundreds and hundreds of open materials in your topic. Okay, so that's what I wanted to show you with open OER Commons. And Merlot is one of the, um, the granddaddies of OER, or grandmamas of OER. Uh, it's been around a long time. Um, frankly, I don't remember what the acronym Merlot stands for, but I think it oh, educational resources might be the ER part. And it's out of California, hence the wine reference. Um, so this one includes, well, look at these numbers. Now we're up to yet another magnitude in size. Um, these are, you know, we're getting up to, or a couple of magnitudes higher, um, you know, 100,000 resources that are contained in here. Couple of things about um, Merlot that I wanted to point out is for one thing, here's a chance in Merlot for you to be a contributor. So let's say you have created some materials and you've designated them as open, you've added a Creative Commons license, and you'd like to share them with others to be part of the community of open practitioners, especially if you're in a subject area that's not well represented. And sorry for this vanity search, but I'll search my own name in here because I just wanted to show you that I've contributed a couple of things to Merlot. Um, and these are some, uh, one is a workshop and one, I'm oh, sorry, one is a, a drill and practice exercise and one is just a quick little assessment tool that I've used in English 115. 
these really aren't that extraordinary. I did this more to, uh, for examples, in uh, the faculty workshop day conference. But anyway, it's um, it's pretty cool to be able to contribute to the open uh, to the open universe. And if I can do it, you can do it. All right, let's look at something a little more significant than my uh, tiny little um, exercises that I contributed. Um, if you're interested in Merlot, by the way, and, and how to contribute, um, feel free to contact me and I can walk you, walk you through it. It's really easy and it's pretty cool. Okay, so now we're back at the main page where we're searching the 93,000 items. And um, I did a search uh, before uh, in preparation for our workshop today on developmental writing because I know there's a curricular initiative coming uh, coming through about developmental writing, and I was curious to see what might be there. Um, so here's one. Uh, the first one I actually thought was pretty exciting. It's a developmental writing open access textbook. And what I was excited about is this is from Lumen Learning, okay? Notice this isn't one of the SUNY ready to adopt courses. Lumen Learning is a larger platform and the SUNY ready to adopt courses are a subset of what Lumen has available. Um, but this is one of their courses. Um, you can see it's got some, um, there's some user ratings. And if you want to take a look at this course, we can, or sorry, this open textbook, we can um, click through and go to the material. Notice we're at the Lumen Learning page. And this looks a lot like what we saw when we looked at that. Um, what what which what was the one that we looked at there? Was it um, the computer applications? So you would be able to import this into Blackboard. Uh, you could ask Lumen for permission to, um, to to get the course cartridge, and you could get started with this. Mike, correct me if I'm wrong about that, but I believe that's how this would work. Uh, definitely does. And I'll just say this uh, course, which is in the repository of development of writing, has been uh, revised and remixed a little bit. So you'll actually find elements of it in our Ready to Adopt catalog. Uh, it's been renamed the uh, CoREC, um, the exact English Comp CoRequisite, CoRequisite course, um, okay. to kind of reflect a trend happening across SUNY and nationally of a, a CoRequisite model. Um, but Great. certainly what Brenda just described works as well. So. Yeah. Thank, thank you for that information. So I hope that's of, of interest. Um, to some of the uh, English faculty who are here today. Um, and again, it's just, it's really an example of um, where it pays to look at a number of different sources to find something open. And you just don't know where you might find it in just which tool. Um, but as you can see, there's quite a few sources here when we did our search on developmental writing. And just to uh, reiterate what I said before, when we looked at OER Commons, there's filtering that's available. So if you wanted to find um, uh, an, a textbook, one thing I don't like is in Merlot, textbook is under open textbook as opposed to under T for textbook. That's the librarian and me talking there. Um, but anyway, here are the seven textbooks related to uh, developmental writing. So that would be a way, um, again, for, for faculty to get started. Um, and there's lots of, you know, you can do all kinds of searches in here and see what you can find. And as I mentioned, the, um, the content in here varies. It's everything from an extensive OER textbook to a one-page exercise, like the kinds of things I contributed so there's a whole range of what's available in Merlot. Um, I'm just gonna look at my timer for a minute. Oh, of course I got long-winded on this. So that's Merlot. So we've gone through the six best bets and in my remaining three minutes, I just wanna highlight a couple of other things. First, there is a search tool called Oasis that's similar to a Google uh, searching tool and it only searches a certain number of open directories. I have found it's imperfect, but it might be a good place to start. You can try, give that a try. And then I would say, if you're not finding things to continue to look in some of these other sources. Other 
two other uh, things I wanted to point out. Um, some of you indicated you're interested in assigning Creative Commons licensing to materials you produce. So for example, Casey Ryan was describing how she's writing materials to, to, um, to supplement the open materials for her criminal justice courses. Um, there's information on the Creative Commons licensing page on the guide that tells you more about all the Creative Commons licenses. And there is um, a video. This is the video of Sarah Romeo and I did our um, faculty workshop day presentation on how to assign Creative Commons. It will walk you through a tool that helps you choose the license and how to apply it to different formatted material. So I would encourage you to look at this. In my remaining two minutes, ironically, what I wanna talk about now is library resources, okay? You'd think I, as the library director, I would have given most of my time to this, but here we go. So let's say you're looking for open and you found, as I think Professor T from Monroe mentioned, she found 75% of what she needed for one of her courses in open and the rest she had to supplement. So where might you go? Well, I hope you think about the library because we license an enormous amount of materials that are available for you to supplement, to add to reading lists and so on. And I wanted to just show you one example. Um, you may or may not be aware that the library has about 200,000 200, eBooks available in its collection that can be linked and added to reading lists in Blackboard and elsewhere, okay? So uh, let me give you an example. Let's say you're teaching foundations of education. Casey, I hope you're listening. Um, so, whoops, I'll try to do this properly. Okay, so I'm but going Brenda, to- Brenda, that actually falls under Liz Yanoff's department. Oh, sorry, sorry, that's what I, I was thinking, uh, Casey Lenzik, not you. I forgot that I got two Casey's on the, on, the, on the line here, Casey, thank you. Yes, and both Casey and Liz are here and, and I've been talking to Michael behind the scenes. So we found a great book, we think. Oh, so, good, um, good, good. We're, well, we're well, moving well, let's forward. Say, well, let's say it's 80% great and you need about 20% more to round out uh, what you need to meet your course, uh, your learning objectives. So um, oh, there's my timer, I'll talk fast. So let's say you go to the library to see, gosh, maybe the library has, maybe there's a couple chapters and books I could include from the library. So I'm going here to our OneSearch interface when I search for everything, it finds, you know, um, did I do a typo? I'm surprised there's not more. Nope. 16,000 articles, books, and so on that have that phrase, but I'm really interested in book chapters. So I'm gonna go to our catalog and I'm gonna repeat that search. And now what I'll find is mostly books and eBooks. Okay, so there's the textbook. Okay, um, but if we wanted to not use the textbook, but to look at something else, the one that caught my eye, and again, I realize I'm, you're, you're not seeing all the, the work I did <clears throat> before this to try to find a good resource, was thinking about schools, a foundation of education reader. What do I like about readers? Is there real, usually anthologies or compilations, and there might be a couple of chapters in here <clears throat> that my students could read. So here it is from two of our ebook providers. I'm logging in because I'm off campus. <coughs> and what I can see is here's my table of contents and here's a particular chapter. So for example, what are the aims and purposes of education? And maybe that's something that's not really addressed in the open book that I'd like my students to read. And there's a chapter here that addresses this perfectly. It's at a level my students like, it's got the content I want them to use. And what I can do with this is I can get a link to this. I can add that link into my Blackboard course and that this traditionally copyrighted material can be used to supplement the OER. 
Okay, so you can put together kind of a quilt of open and traditionally copyrighted material and please consider the library as a source for some of that supplementary material. Okay, I've been trying to be really careful about sticking with our breaks and so on. So I'm gonna stop here and let's take five minutes, this time just a five minute break and we're gonna reconvene in five minutes. My slide is gonna say 3.30, but let's make it 3.33. Um, Okay, I'll see you in five minutes and we'll wrap it up. We'll have a chance for questions at the end. Okay, see you soon. <laughs>